just cathedral really, I don't know, it's heavy metal. It's heavy metal with loads of different influences. And then I was a promoter, I used to put on gigs in a pub down the road from here called The Hand and Heart. I used to do a lot of like European hardcore bands and American hardcore bands and stuff. I started off doing a fanzine that led me to do promoting gigs and then I got to know loads of bands and I used to hitchhike around following punk bands all around the country and stuff. Um, you know, that was my life. I really absolutely loved being a part of that scene. I thought it was like the greatest thing to be involved with, you know. I went to a Catholic school and I hated religion. And to me, that this was the next best thing to finding something that you're really into, you know. There was no religion, but it kind of was in a way, I suppose. And um, yeah, so Napalm, I used to see them all the time before, before Mick joined and they were kind of a, a bit different. Uh, when Mick actually joined them, they totally transformed and turned their style around and they just got faster and faster and faster and faster. It got to the stage where every week you go see them with the Mermaid and you'd be like, they can't get any faster. But the next week they'd actually get faster and you'd be at the stage where it's like, they're so fast it's bloody stupid, you know, it's kind of ridiculous. But anyway, so then, then Mick asked me to join, I joined. Didn't have a clue what I was doing. When we did the Scum album, I think I had one rehearsal before it, and we did one gig without a rehearsal. And um, and I was promoting the gig that I did, which was my first gig that I ever did. I didn't really know what I was doing. And uh, in the studio, we had the lyrics. Jim, uh, Jim, the old bass player, wrote the lyrics. And Mick was standing on the side of me, whilst I was standing in front of the microphone, and he was cueing me when to come in. <laughs> it's like I really didn't know what I was doing. And then of course, like Scum, that, that was the album Scum, and that turns out to be like a, I guess a, quite a legendary album now, after all these years, I suppose. And um, it just went from there, really. Um, you know, we did quite a lot of stuff. We were kids, we didn't know what the hell was going on. We were on TV all the time. Front cover of NME, John Peel was a massive champion of the band. So they, these, these kind of things happening were quite surreal, really. I mean, you know, when you've grown up, a kid listening to John Peel since you were 10 or 11, with like an earpiece from a transistor radio. <laughs> and your covers like yeah. in bed listening to the new UK subs new session or something like that. You know, John Peel was absolutely the best teacher you never had at school really, I suppose. Taught me everything really. So then the next minute you're on his radio show and it didn't kind of make sense really. And then you're getting all this controversy. And then there's all this stuff going on, you're touring all these places and, and it was great, but uh, it got to a stage where I just didn't enjoy it anymore. I think it, me personally, I, I found it to be the fun had gone out of it. Loads of other reasons aside, I decided to leave. But during that time, I was really, like, a, like we were saying earlier, I was getting into the heavier, slower bands. And I was getting more and more into Sabbath from which one in general and stuff like that. And um, I had no aspirations to ever do another band again until I kind of met these guys, really. <laughs> The idea for the band came into th thought, at least, around about was it late 89 or something, I think. I'd met uh, Gary previously and Griff previously, but we'll go into that a bit later, I suppose. Um, basically, one night we were in a, a gig in Cardiff, it was a carcass gig. And um, my flatmate at the, at the time used to drive Carcass to, most, to their shows occasionally. And, um, so I just went down to the gig with him, went up to Liverpool, met Griff, and the guys went down to Wales, got extremely drunk. And uh, it was about the second or third time I met Griff, I think. And he was doing a fanzine called Under the Oak, which was, it was mainly doom and associated bands that had some kind of sim affinity with that kind of idea and that kind of style. And I was completely blown away by that fact that someone was actually doing something like that because you, you, there's like a handful of people you knew were into that kind of music. There weren't that, that many really. And for somebody to be so dedicated to it, I thought, wow, this is brilliant. And anyway, we got, as I say, we got quite drunk, to say the least, and started talking about all our favourite bands. And I'd left um, the band I was in previous to that, Napalm Death. And we said, oh, why don't we try? Why don't we get something together for the hell of it? You know, just do a demo. And um, see what we can come up with and uh, that was basically the foundations of the idea we started that night and then uh, I think we both woke up the next day with extreme hangovers saying do you remember that conversation we had we were like yeah <laughs> it's like a real great idea but who the hell are we going to find to uh, like musicians that were into that kind of music that would actually be capable of like 
actually making like at least four people into a band, you know, because we didn't really know any other people. And then we both um, realised about Gaz because we both met him, I think, previously for the probably for the sake. I think Gaz might have bought a copy of the fanzine off you before, and you stayed in touch. I don't really yeah. know. And I, I was introduced to Gaz from. I think we, used, I think we used to write together, didn't we? The tape trading time. Yeah. Well, the first time I ever met Lee was I met him. I was in a band and we played with their Nuclear Assault and uh, I kind of had a sort of, I got on well with their bass player Dan Lilka, he kind of, he was a really cool guy. And, he was uh, a friend of mine as well. Yeah, and obviously he, uh, uh, I was just on the tour bus with him one day and he said to me, I'll come and listen to some stuff at the back of the bus and he had the Napalm album which had just come out which was Enslavement, uh, the pre-copy I think or something and uh, I was just talking to him about music and things and that was that really and then I uh, met Lee at a gig, he introduced me to Lee and he said oh this is Gaz, uh, he's a big Sabbath fan and he likes trouble and things like that because I didn't really know anyone who was into them kind of bands, I was the only person I really knew that liked them, that stuff and I thought it was kind of cool that he was into the kind of uh, bands that I liked as well. So that was the, my first meeting with Lee and then that was 88 and 89 I went to, I think it was, was it the Grind Crusher tour? Yeah, it would have been. Yeah, there. and that's where I met Griff because I think I went to see Carcass and there was Bolt Thrower playing as well and I was walking through the foyer and uh, there was this like long-haired guy with this fanzine like under the oak and I was like, wow, oh, that's really cool, what's all this? All the bands that I'd either heard or heard of, never actually heard some of them but I knew the names. So I got his fanzine and eventually just started writing to him and uh, he then mentioned that Lee had they'd met each other and they were talking about getting a band together. Would I be interested in doing something? I sort of corresponded with the two of them and uh, I said yeah I'll give it a shot and everything and uh, see how it goes and you know like uh, what, 19 years later I'm still sitting here talking about it. You know? so. <laughs> <laughs> around for a couple of years and uh, when I was in that band um, I tried to do things which you know we did with Cathedral later on but obviously not as good but uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> no that's a bit I mean that's a bit <laughs> you probably got that wrong way around that's the brain wasn't as good as I'm saying but what I'm saying is that <laughs> I tried to get the doom elements into my old band but none of the guys really in my old band were really wanted to go in that direction. I mean, kind of weird, I just, I was more into the slower stuff. It, it was more, to me, it was more important. Um, but anyway, just going on to Acid Rain, I, I kind of just left them and uh, and then just kind of quit. I had a few, few sort of personality clashes with uh, a couple of members of the band and didn't really get on with them and just decided to uh, up sticks halfway through a tour. And That's the night I met you, was Yeah, it? that was the last, last night. <laughs> You're supposed to go to Europe. Yeah, that night, you? wrote him a goodbye note and said. You said goodbye to me and left him a note. So, <laughs> and he'd gone. Yeah, Let's so, go to yeah, Europe without him. Yeah, so I just said, like, see you. I uh, don't want to be part of it anymore. <laughs> I had no desires really to. I was supposed to be in another band. Ambitions. Didn't really what I wanted to do. Uh, I think we were probably all like that. Yeah. I think I'd sort of done it, kind of got disillusioned, you know, disillusioned, like this, leaving with it, and uh, I don't know. I just then I obviously just got in touch with these two. Um, first few rehearsals, we had a drummer called Andy Baker, and he was um, an ex-member of. The Verrucas and, and Sacrage, which is one of my favourite bands. I think collectively we're big fans of Sacrage. First rehearsals were kind of weird at first though, because with them, um, I just think uh, we didn't really know each other that well. We, we, we were quite nervous. Yeah, we didn't, yeah. Songs, right? we we didn't, didn't have, know we each other. We had this idea of a band, we wanted to be in a Doom band, we wanted to do something and we wanted to emulate the bands we were into. And it was weird. Yeah. But we didn't really, we didn't know each other's personalities and we all like from different parts of the country and Real, I was really nervous coming down and stuff. And uh, I think we all were. Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, we all were because we had, we had the concept, but we didn't have the, appro the way to approach yeah, it. Yeah, we didn't really know what we, were, we knew what we kind of wanted to do, we didn't know how to sort of go about it, sort of thing. And 
we got there in the end, like, you know, but uh, it was kind of strange the first ones. And then uh, I think after well, that. Well, Griff was playing guitar. Yeah, Griff was playing guitar the first three or four years. So there was like two guitars and no bass. Yeah. And then um, you switched the bass when Ben joined, I think. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. It must have been. Yeah. Because uh, then we got our drummer called Ben Mockery. He joined for. Uh, did the not, first demo. Yeah, not, f not for long, but he was a good drummer for the kind of style that we did. He suited us perfectly, really. Totally, yeah. He was uh, for the good, slow stuff. good for what we did and everything. So we just went along for a couple of months, got some stuff together, and then we we're about to do a demo. And then, lo and behold. Another I Acid Rain next member came along. <laughs> <laughs> I took over from Gaz uh, about, I guess about three months after he left, it was about a month and a half after Acid Rain returned from Europe. Uh, their guitar player gave me a ring and asked me if I wanted to rejoin them, so yeah, yeah, I replaced Gaz and Acid Rain. And you were, was it Lord Crucify you were in before? Lord Crucify before that, yeah. Really deadline. With my... Deadline. Uh, deadline. Deadline before that, yeah. 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 There's another band called it right now, I should yeah. see. It was literally a couple of days before we recorded the demo, wasn't it? Uh, I think I'd been down to rehearse for you before that, and a couple of weeks before or something. What but I remember about... I about don't remember we rehearsed the, the, like, the night before. In the flat. Do it, and you were like, oh my god, it's going to be awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it wasn't ready, it wasn't ready. It was like the same with Soul Sacrifice, writing all that stuff the day before. Yeah. We didn't have a name for the band or anything at the time, did no, we? No, what was it? it you you wanted to call it Father, yeah, yeah. I wanted to call it Tower of Silence. There's so many different Trinity was another one, I think. I remember, it. yeah, I remember we had all these uh, riff ideas and Gaz started coming up with more and more stuff and then. Um, yeah, you'd stockpile them, hadn't you, with the Morbid Doom? There's a few <laughs> Morbid Doom cast offs yeah. uh, flying around. <laughs> but then. I think you met Adam at a record fair, didn't you? In Leeds. Yeah. 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 Well, I bumped into him a few times going around pubs and having it and stuff. Yeah. I think on one occasion I came back to you after now. You put some more videos yeah, on so, before yeah. you actually recorded. Before I, recorded well, I remember getting the phone call off him. He'd been around there and you came yeah. up with that riff at the end of Serpent Eve or something. Yeah, well, I'd written that on my talk before. And yeah, we'd been fiddling around there. Well, I remember you sent a cassette down of just riffs. And I was listening to it thinking, Christ, this is amazing. It was like a funeral request and Serpent Evil on this tape, just oh, guitar. Right, yeah, yeah. I was like, wow, where's this guy come from? It's yeah. like, you know, the contrast between your style and Gaz, it was like absolutely perfect. I couldn't think, I, I, couldn't, I, didn't, I didn't know where you were coming from. It's like, who is this guy? Who is this guy? <laughs> How did he come up with these riffs and stuff? I thought he was fantastic, you know. And then when we actually got together and started writing stuff for the album, it was, like, it was great. <laughs> So how did you come up with those kind of ideas uh, at uh, that time, at that period of time? Cause it to be honest, they just kind of came out of nowhere. Funeral request was, I was trying to do a kind of a bit of a Black Sabbath cross with which find a general type thing, but it just came out slower. Uh, and nothing sounded like any of the two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> sound like them at all. It's, it's weird how you say that now, and it's actually yeah. probably how you meant it at the time. That's how it was but like you yeah, say, it didn't sound like either of those bands. No. Because I guess what I would say, personally, what I would think is, we were kids, you, we were young, listening to extreme music and then getting into, going back with time, getting into the earlier yeah, bands that it, were yeah. the roots mm -hmm. of the whole kind of heavy stuff we were into. So you're obviously approaching it with a younger head who's still coming out of the extreme metal kind of scene. Yeah, I mean, we'd, we'd all been playing this aggressive... Uh, Acid Rain. <laughs> well, so I still got to that. More aggressive <laughs> than other stuff. Yeah. Uh, just remember guys coming upstairs and said, oh, how about calling Cathedral of Doom? Lag. Uh, <laughs> lag. <laughs> I think that day we'd walk past the cathedral, yeah. the ruins, yeah. and we were both looking up at the cathedral and we were talking about it. It's like, wow, isn't that yeah. awesome, you know? And we, I remember saying to you, imagine if we want the sound to sound how that looks, the ruins of the cathedral. Big, yeah, massive, yeah. bombastic, and <coughs> impressive. Kind yeah. of, that's the sound we wanted to aim for. 
And then I think we'd been down the pub. And he did come, he was downstairs <laughs> looking for all my records or whatever, would he? <laughs> <laughs> he came upstairs, we were pissed, he was like, oh yeah, yeah, like you say, he's like, yeah, I reckon we call it Cathedral of Doom, mate. <laughs> 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 I was like, for weeks I was like, Cathedral of Doom, no, no, no. And then on the bus one day, I remember, I think we were in Birmingham or something, so yeah, why don't we just call it Cathedral? And then it kind of stuck, and then, we, then it was the best name it could have possibly been, really. I really thought when the initial idea of Cathedral came up, we, we, it was just like a bunch of mates like who were totally fanatical about doom metal and stuff. It was just more of a more of a novelty than anything else for us actually to get together. And the, and the idea of recording a demo was something that was almost like a fantasy, really. It's because I grew up, you know, obliterated by cost as well. It was like I had to travel from different parts of the country. And I mean, we were like, you know, like the flat I was in in Hillfields. We literally would. The train fare would crucify everybody. That was like uh, like two weeks gyro or something on one train <laughs> ticket. Most <laughs> of the cold and, and dark. And there'd be no electricity in the flat. We'd be scratching pennies together. Yeah, to you had take that little electric fire. That's right. Yeah. So, and we were, you know, we used to watch. We used to torture ourselves by watching like old pants people videos, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, rising damp episodes and Steptoe and Son and Abbey Hill's party and stuff like that, just to humour ourselves because we were so depressed because we didn't have any money to get wrecked. <laughs> so we had some real, you know, we were quite a, I think we were quite a, a band that had like a real, quite a bleak. It was bleak. Presentation with the way we presented ourselves, but we actually had a really good laugh. I think we all, we were all quite cynical people really, mm -hmm. but with a real dark sense of humour, so we always had a, a great laugh in those days. Um, I think when we when we did the Forest album, it was almost like a it was an endurance test really to actually make it to, to, to make it convincing. I I personally felt I had to make myself feel the anxiety that was expressed in the music. And I think we were all going through like problems with relationships and stuff at the time. As much as our probably our ex-girlfriends wouldn't like to hear it, but it was probably <laughs> Pretty grateful to them that uh, it went horribly wrong because it made us express the anxiety. Personally speaking, with Cathedral, I was more inspired by someone like Michael Jira from the Swans or Nick Blinko from Rudimentary Pinot, the Diamanda Galler or Decadent Poetry. Curtis, uh, uh, well, I, was, I was really into Charles Baudelaire and, and I think Griff was really into Lovecraft and stuff and, um, and Griff bought this amazing book which I think um, Funeral Request was pretty yeah, much based the around. Yeah, Book of Jade wasn't it? By uh, D.P. Barnett. It's very it's kind of similar to Baudelaire and it's like tripped out uh, it's like death decadent. wish kind of stuff. Yeah. Death imagery, romanticism. So Absolutely yeah. fantastic and I think the lyrics that you took from that and used on Funeral Request are just perfect. Really. Yeah, it fitted in well with we went up to Adams to sort out the lyrics to the music. It just seemed to fit in well, didn't it? Slotted in. Yeah, I think lyrically that the first album's very quite strong. I mean, I think my favourite one that I wrote is probably Equilibrium. I think that summarises the way I feel in many respects today, really. We were going for something that was really quite nihilistic really but in a, in a kind of a positive cleansing way in the fact that it was so kind of nihilistic that it was almost sarcastic and through that it was almost quite humorous in some respects but obviously people <laughs> I don't think people saw the humorous <laughs> side to it and it, this is another thing I suppose I mean coming from a punk background musicians don't tend to be as good as the heavy metal musicians because I think there's a reason for that I think like kids who are into heavy metal are more the music itself is more important than anything else. Whereas with the punk stuff, lyrically and ideologically, ideologically the, message wise, is the message is more important. Concept, so, yeah. so you spend more time writing lyrics and concentrating on visuals. And, and I think the punk side of things is more of a creative, artistic kind of sentiment, more so than the musical one. You know, everything was very visual with punk. And, um, and it was very important. And I think with... with um, Forest of Equilibrium artwork. We came up with a title, I think, hit in a pub next door. There was a band called Atavist and they had an EP called Equilibrium and we were talking about that and we were like, oh that's a good idea to call a song or call the album that. And um, 
And then you said something like, I, I can't remember, it was me and you were talking, and then we came up with the idea of a forest of equilibrium, and that just put a, a vision in my head. And um, this vision was relayed to Dave, was it? Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> well, there's an art gallery, there's a kind of a gallery up the road. And, um, oh, and uh, it's, it's crap, really. It's generally, like local artists doing shitty religious pictures or landscapes of Herschel Common or something. And it's generally crap. <laughs> But I remember walking past there one day, and we had the idea for the for the artwork, and um, but I couldn't think of anyone to do it. I couldn't think of anyone to do it. In the old days, we used to do cut and paste stuff, and make our own sleeves, I suppose. In the, in the to hurl it down the photocopiers. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And I, I still prefer that to most stuff that's done now, like Photoshop crap. But anyway, went past this gallery and saw some artwork in the some paintings in the in the window. I was like, oh, it really caught my eye. So yeah, I went into the gallery, left a message in the notebook that was there for local artists, where you leave your comments on local artists' work, shall we say. And then I left a message saying um, to Dave Patchett, really like your stuff. It's like nothing I've ever really seen before. We're looking for someone to design our record sleeve. Would you be interested? Um, and then, quite ironically, about a day later, I got a letter from him put through the door and I found out he lived in the council block, which was directly opposite mine, pretty much. It was 